to Mexicans. And then export those products to the rest of the world. In St. Petersburg, Russia, there was something known as a turbine test bed. There were five of these in the world. Four of them used proprietary closed source software. It takes a month for the proprietary people to make even the slightest change to their software to allow the engineers to do a better job at designing turbines. But the last one, who, who was in St. Petersburg, used Linux to run his system. He used MySQL as a database, GNU plot to plot out where he puts the sensors, Tickle TK to draw diagrams for the engineers. And he can make ch changes to his software overnight so that his customers who are engineers get a better value for their money. It's the value of the software, not the cost. So you have a value added reseller, the person who takes the different components puts them together to create value for the customer. That's what they charge for. That's where they make their money. Not whether the software is closed source or open source. But it's easier for them to work with open source software because they can change the software to meet the needs of their customers. There are many real life business models which talk about the use of how people took proprietary software, made it open, and actually made more money than ever because they had more customers than ever. And the customers helped them change the software and make it better. If you're an educator, if you're in a university, you should be using free software to teach your students because free software teaches the students twice. Number one, they learn how to use the software, which is how, what they learn with closed source software. With closed source software, they learn how the software, or how to use the software. With open source, they not only learn how to use the software, but they learn how the software works and they can extend the software and make it better. They learn twice. So the summary of the first part of my talk of making money is that you can make money with free software all of the same ways that you make money with closed source proprietary software. Integration, teaching, value added to the customer. But in addition, you can make software in an additional way. You can make money by changing the software to meet the customer's needs. And that's what you can't do with closed source proprietary software. With that, I'd like to talk about Project Kawa. It's a project which I've been working on for over five years. And we have just launching it this week. When most U.S. citizens think of Latin America, they have this vision in their mind. They think of the rainforest. They think of the Andes Mountains. They think of Carnival! <laughs> and my past president thought that everybody in Latin America spoke Latin. <laughs> but we all know that that's not, that's not what Latin America is about. That the reality in Latin America is that 80% of the people in Latin America live in an urban environment. They live in a city. They live in a city like Mexico City, one of the largest cities on the face of the earth. And they live in a very dense environment with tall apartment buildings, tall office buildings, and very, very close houses. Here, the internet is not 500 miles away. If the internet is, is there at all, it's typically only 50 feet away. And what we need to do 
is to bridge the gap of that 50 feet to bring the internet to everybody. So with the One Laptop Per Child project, they were trying to bring the internet to the African plains, where a lot of times the internet was 500 miles away and they didn't have electricity. I think that was a wonderful project, but I want to bring the internet to some place like the 2.5 million kids in Sao Paulo, to the 5 million kids in Mexico City. And I wanted them to have access to the internet to get the information that they need to learn and to have good jobs. So this is my African savanna. It is known as the favela, a very dense population of very poor people. We have other needs in computer science. We need to reduce the amount of electricity that computers use. We need to increase the lifetime of computers from three years to 10 years. We need to give a better computing experience to people to make it easier for them to use computers. We need to have more local support, not somebody in India or West Texas. We need to create between four and five million new high-tech jobs inside of Latin America. The world is going through an economic crisis. We need to fix that. And we need to move people from welfare and make them taxpayers. We need to be able to double the number of free software developers. And we need to be able to employ the unemployable. And I'll talk more about that later. But most of all, we have to have a solution which is sustainable. And that means a solution which is not dependent on government money, but a solution which creates a capitalistic system of jobs for people. Thank you.